Today we will discuss some structure of amino acids and structure of functional relationship in proteins. The main points of this lecture. The first one is a general structure and classification of amino acids, levels of protein structure and function of proteins, and protein dendration and folding. General structure and classification of amino acids. With one exception, as a proline, amino acid proline, uh, all amino acids and proteinogenic amino acids and structure of proteins contains three main parts. The first one, amino group, which has uh, basic properties. A carboxylic group, which has acid properties. And variable side chain, which gives specific properties of amino acids and structure of proteins, or specific, uh, has, has a specific functional groups. All these three parts connected by alpha carbon atom, which has four bonds. Uh, three of them contain uh, interacts with a mana group. The first one. The second one uh, interacts with carboxylic group. The third one con uh, co connects to variable side chain, and the fourth related with hydrogen atom. According to the structure of amino acids, uh, based on their side chain, we can divide different amino acids on several groups. Non-polar aliphatic amino groups, um, amino acids like glycine, proline, alanine, etc. Aromatic amino acids, phenylalanine, tyrosine, tryptophan. Polar uncharged, uh, that means that they can interact with water, but without any charge, positive or negative, threonine, serine, asparagine, glutamine. Sulfur-containing amino acids like cysteine, methionine. Charged negative, that means that their side chain contains negative charge, aspartate, glutamate. And charged positive, histidine, lysine, and arginine. The main function of amino acid is... Uh, structural function and structure of proteins. But some proteins have to get specific properties, like, like hydrophilic properties or hydrophobic properties. Hydrophilic properties means that this or the molecule can interact with water. Hydrophobic molecule, molecules uh, can't interact with water, and they can interact only with lipids. So, um, according to the structure and functional proteins, uh, these amino acids, which works as a blocks of or structure of um, um, proteins, they should be modified. Like maybe the carbohydrate addition is a one 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 form of modif modification. So uh, it uh, sounds like O glycosylation. That means that O H group in serine, threonine, tyrosine can interact with um, carbohydrates like glucose or fructose. A lipid addition, a plantilation, that means that um, structure of proteins contains a, a part of palmitalic acid. Regulation, maybe a phosphorylation. So when we add phosphate group, this molecule should be changed. We give additional negative charge and the structure of protein should be change and the function should be changed so um, these proteins could be activated or inhibited. And uh, modified amino acids uh, like uh, oxidation of proline, lysine or carboxylation like glutamine. Because amino acids contains two types of groups, neg negative charged and positive charged, they can interact to form peptide bond. So when we remove a molecule of water, we can connect two amino acids to build a sequence of amino acids to form peptide or proteins. Levels of protein structure and function of proteins. In most cases, most proteins have four types of protein structure. Primary structure is a sequence of amino acids. Secondary structure is a helix-like structure. The triary structure is a three-dimensional structure. And quaternary structure, which contains several subunits, or different peptides or different proteins in one molecule. 
the simplest structure of proteins, the primary structure. That means that sequence of amino acids which connected by peptide bond form a sequence which can form a more complex structure of proteins. So according to the, the sequence, according to the structure of amino acids, we can find in the, in the sequence two sites, a I mean, terminal end, that means um, it contains free amino group, and carboxylic terminal end. Uh, which carry negative charge. So this line structure could be after that converted into more complex structure because side, side groups can interact with to each another and to form for dimensional structure uh, which we call a secondary structure. On this slide, you can see two types of secondary structure. Beta pleated sheet, that means that we can form, our proteins can form a sheet-like structure, uh, and um, these two, two peptides can interact to each other. And the second form is, a, or maybe a primary form, the most important form is the alpha helix on the right side of this slide. So it, it forms a helix-like structure, uh, which is uh, supported by interaction between carboxylic group on the one, one level and uh, the amino group on the next level on, the, uh, on this structure. So this helix structure forms additional, additional no, more complex structure co uh, compared with a simplest sequence of amino acids. Um, like in primary structure. And um, you have to keep in mind that uh, these uh, helix structures can, could be found not only in free peptides, but they can form as a parts of more complex structures like the tri structure and quaternary structure. The next level for organization of proteins is the tri structure of proteins. This structure gives a three-dimensional structure of proteins and supported by electrostatic attraction of negative or positive charged molecules or hydrophobic interaction inside these molecules or supported by metals which can form like a bonds between two negative charged amino acids and um, uh, this structure uh, we can find in most proteins which can, can gives our functions like enzymes, like contraction proteins, or others, or receptors in the cells. According to the three-dimensional structure, we can divide two, we can find two types of proteins, like fibrous proteins and globular proteins. Fiber, fibrous proteins have a long sequences have, have long se uh, sequences of amino acids which form most in most cases structural proteins like collagen or contract uh, contraction proteins in muscles uh, global proteins have a um, more compact structure and in most cases they works like um, carrying proteins like hemoglobin or um, enzymes the most complex structure of protein is a quaternary structure of proteins. That means that different proteins or different peptides can form a sole a compact structure with additional functions. For example, we, you can see on this slide two structure of proteins. Myoglobin is a protein which can interacts with oxygen in our muscles and gives our muscles red, red color. And uh, it works like a depot of oxygen in our muscles. Or in the, in the middle, on this slide, in the middle of the picture, you can see a structure of beta chain of hemoglobin. But the whole structure of hemoglobin contains two beta chain, chains and two alpha chains. But um, uh, it, can, it also can interact with oxygen. But the main function of Myoglobin is a reserving of oxygen in our muscles, but the main function of hemoglobin, uh, which also contains heme group, is a transport oxygen from lungs to, to peripheral organs like muscles, brain, kidneys. And um, 
uh, this function is uh, more complex, more complex, and in case of um, interaction with oxygen in lungs, it has to interact more quickly with oxygen, and in peripheral tissues, it has to give oxygen to our peripheral organs. The main functions of proteins are these ones. Enzymes, then, the, which catalyze different chemical reactions. Hormones, which transfer information from one cell to another. Receptors, which insert it into membranes, in most cases, uh, which inter can interact with the signal molecules. Antibodies, uh, which protects our, our body from infections, viral or bacterial infections. Structural components, like collagen or like collagen or extracellular matrix proteins, transporters of other compounds like hemoglobin, contractile elements, and muscles. Protein denaturation and folding. Because proteins are supported by very weak bonds, um, different factors like changes in pH, temperature, or solvents can disrupt ionic hydrogen and hydrophobic bonds, and we can uh, we can we can lose three-dimensional structures like um, quaternary structure, tetrahedral structure, or secondary structure. And but primary but primary structure is not affected, and um, it's supported by more strong bonds, covalent bonds. Uh, if denaturated proteins returns into its native states after the denaturation agent uh, is removed, the process is called reinturation, so returning to natural structure. When we synthesize proteins by our ribosomes, we have a specific proteins which help us, which help ribosomes to give a specific three-dimensional structure of proteins. We call them heat shock proteins. They have uh, different functions. Um, in uh, HSP70 gives uh, help help helps us help us to synthesize proteins. But um, heat shock protein 60 form a barrel-shaped structure which catalyze reinturation of damaged proteins in after different reaction of different generation agents.